Mao Zedong is the founder of modern China. He's also responsible for more death than anyone else in history. How did he get into power, and how did he kill so many people both intentionally and unintentionally? What is his legacy in the Chinese Communist Party today like? On this episode of Intrigued Mind, we'll be looking into the life and policies of Mao Zedong. On December 26, 1893, Mao Zedong was born to a family of wealthy farmers in Shaoshan, Hunan Province in China. He studied Confucian classics at the local village school for five years, but left at the age of 13 so that he could work on his family's farm full-time. Mao was known as a rebellious child. He was expelled from several schools and once ran away from home. Mao's dad arranged a marriage for him when he was 14, but Mao refused to acknowledge his new 20-year-old bride even after she moved into the family home with them, showing his disdain for traditional authority that would remain throughout his life. Before we dive into that, if you're interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. When Mao was older, he moved to Changsha, the capital of Hunan province, to continue his education. His education was sidetracked when he spent six months as a soldier in 1911 during the revolution that overthrew the Qing dynasty. After that, he went to the teacher's training school where he really began to embrace leftist ideology he became increasingly fascinated by the 1917 Russian Revolution, as well as a 4th century Chinese philosophy called legalism. Legalism was an ideology that promoted having a huge merit-based bureaucracy to run China. After graduating, Mao followed a professor of his named Yang Chengji to Beijing and got a job at the Beijing University Library. His supervisor while he worked at the library was a co-founder of the Chinese Communist Party and had a major influence on Mao's thinking. He was Mao's first real connection to politics. In 1920, Mao married Yang Kaihui, the daughter of his professor. He was technically still married to the woman his parents had arranged for him to marry, but he didn't care. Around this time, Mao read a translated version of the Communist Manifesto and became a die-hard Marxist. Six years later, the Nationalist Party, or KMT, murdered 5,000 communists in Shanghai, kicking off the Chinese Civil War. Mao, who had become more and more involved in the Communist Party, led the Autumn Harvest Uprising against the KMT. Mao was brutally crushed, and 90% of his peasant army was killed. Mao and the few survivors fled to the countryside, where they recruited more replacement peasants for their cause. The KMT took over Beijing and became the official government of China as far as foreign countries were concerned. Mao had lost for the time being. A local warlord captured Mao's wife and one of their sons in 1930. Because she refused to denounce communism, the warlord decapitated her in front of her son. That was how deeply ideological she was. Later that year, Mao married his second, or third, wife, He Zhejun. In 1931, Mao was elected chairman of the Soviet Republic of China. The KMT didn't acknowledge them, but they were already in de facto control of a lot of territory. Mao ordered a reign of terror against landlords and murdered around 200,000 people. His fanatical Red Army were known for their extensive use of torture. The KMT returned to destroy the Red Army, but they managed to escape after being surrounded in 1934. The Red Army's retreat, known as the Long March, was deadly. Mao started off with about 85,000 troops, but after the nearly 4,000-mile journey, he was left with just 7,000. The freezing weather, treacherous mountain paths, unbridged rivers, and random warlord attacks killed almost all of his troops. Communism in China almost died as a result of this march. In 1937, Japan invaded China. Mao and the KMT temporarily put their differences aside so that they could unite against this new outside threat. During World War II, Japan captured Beijing and the Chinese coast, but could never occupy the interior of the country. The combined armies kept them out of most of China. Meanwhile, in 1938, Mao divorced his third wife and moved on to his fourth, an actress named Jiang Qing. She would later be known as Madame Mao. After World War II, the two Chinese armies immediately went back to fighting each other. Mao won, and the communists took over China, with the KMT fleeing to Taiwan, where they remain today. Mao then proceeded to intentionally and unintentionally kill millions and millions of people in order to try and create a society that would fit his communist ideology. Again, the first people he targeted were landlords. He executed 2 to 5 million of them. Estimates vary. Former KMT members and businessmen were next on the list. Oddly enough, Mao also ruthlessly targeted those he deemed intellectuals. Despite the fact that Mao himself was an intellectual, he considered intellectuals to be a massive threat to his regime and had as many of them killed as possible. Wealthy people and capitalists were targeted as well, although not all of them were killed. Some were just given public struggle sessions, where they were humiliated, beaten, and tortured by people who they knew personally. Many of the people who survived their struggle sessions committed suicide afterwards. 
But the deadliest thing Mao did wasn't actually any of his targeted mass killings. Mao killed far more people through sheer incompetence than he did with murder. In 1958, Mao launched the Great Leap Forward with the goal of turning China into a modern industrial power. Despite the fact that Mao's first job had been farming, he oversaw the worst-run agricultural system in history. China's tightly controlled economy had extremely inefficient food distribution. Mao's forced agricultural techniques were far worse than what farmers had been doing for centuries before he took over. Mao also started something called the Four Pests Campaign, the goal of which was to kill sparrows, rats, mosquitoes, and flies. This was ecologically devastating, as sparrows in particular played an important role in the ecosystem. Sparrows were the primary predator of locusts, and when Mao killed millions of them, the locust population got out of control and ate vast swaths of crops. Mao's regime regularly overreported grain production in order to cover up how poorly things were going, which only made things worse. On top of all this, Mao ordered many farmers to stop farming altogether and start producing iron and steel. The result of the Great Leap Forward was a humanitarian disaster on a scale that's almost hard to imagine. An estimated 30 to 40 million Chinese people starved to death in the resulting Great Famine. Some historians have said that there was widespread cannibalism in China at this time. To top it all, Mao refused to import food or any foreign aid to lessen the suffering for ideological reasons. Mao's foreign policy has had far-reaching consequences for the modern geopolitical landscape. He sent his so-called People's Volunteer Army into the Korean War to team up with the North Koreans and fight off South Korea and the UN. Mao saved North Korea from defeat and created the stalemate on the Korean Peninsula that continues to this day. In 1951, Mao sent the military to take over Tibet and exile the Dalai Lama. Mao also did not get along with his communist neighbors. While Mao was in charge, China's relationship with the Soviet Union deteriorated. The two countries disagreed on the Great Leap Forward, which was too crazy even for the Soviets. Russia also didn't want China to have nuclear weapons and didn't approve of their deadly border skirmishes with India. Other members of the Chinese Communist Party eventually pushed Mao out of power because of how bad the Great Leap Forward had gone. They freed peasants from the communes and imported wheat from Australia and Canada to feed people. For several years, Mao was just a figurehead. Mao returned with a vengeance, however. In 1966, the 73-year-old Mao launched the Cultural Revolution. He called upon the youth of the country to take back the communist revolution from the moderates who had pushed him out of power. He told young people to destroy the so-called four olds, old customs, old culture, old habits, and old ideas. Mao wanted to totally replace traditional Chinese culture with communism. Ancient art, books, and temples were burned to the ground, and more intellectuals were hunted down and murdered. Mao executed and exiled his political rivals in the party. He sent the man who had replaced him, Deng Xiaoping, to work on a tractor factory in the countryside. During the 1970s, Mao's health began to fail. It's thought that like Adolf Hitler, he may have suffered from Parkinson's disease. He also had lung problems due to a lifetime of smoking. He suffered two major heart attacks and died in 1976. After his death, the more moderate and pragmatic people in the Chinese Communist Party took over and got rid of the other truly far-left revolutionaries. Deng Xiaoping returned from the tractor factory and led China into a new era of economic policy that was somewhat grounded in reality instead of pure ideology. They adopted a variety of capitalist ideas and began to export goods and create wealth. Mao's former actress wife was arrested and put on trial for crimes associated with the Cultural Revolution. In China, Mao's legacy is a complicated issue. He is rightly considered to be the founding father of modern China. He has inspired rebellions in the 21st century like the Nepali and Indian Maoist movements. Although hard to know decisively, his leadership caused more deaths than other bloody dictators like Joseph Stalin or Adolf Hitler. In the party under Deng's leadership, Mao is declared to be 70% correct in his policies. That's pretty generous, all things considered. However, Deng also stated that the Great Famine was 70% due to human error. Despite this, Mao's ideology continues to have an influence on China today and has seen resurgence under current head of state Xi Jinping. Hopefully, the travesties that occurred under Mao will not also return. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.